Uh, let me uh, bring up a little sticky here so we can work on it, okay? So again, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you guys be quiet so that I can focus on getting this thing done. Okay, so uh, number one, okay? Uh, period. Formula. 2 pi over B. What's B in this case? 2, so it's 2 pi over 2. So period is pi. Is everybody okay on that? Okay. Amplitude? 3. Always a positive number. Always a positive number. Now for phase shift, what you do is you set 2x plus pi equal to 0. Set it equal to 0. Solve for x, so x equals minus pi over 2. This is your phase shift. Okay? Turns out that it, that is also your starting point. That is also your starting point. Okay? Uh, for part D, your domain for cosine is all real numbers, except I don't want you to write it like this. Okay, some kids want to write it like that because that's the way the tutor taught them. Uh, I would prefer you write it like this, minus infinity to infinity. Okay? And then range for this, gra for this function is going to be minus 3 to plus 3. In other words, it's bouncing back and forth between minus 3 and plus 3. Okay, so that's your range. And key points we'll get after we start graphing. Okay? So in order to graph this, what we need is starting point. Okay, uh, the function was 3 cosine 2x plus pi. Okay, this is the function we want to graph. All right, so starting point is, so I'll write xs is equal to minus pi over 2. It's always whatever the phase shift is. Okay, then for cosine to get the ending point, what you do is you set 2x plus pi to 2 pi because your mother cosine function goes from 0 to 2 pi for one cycle, okay? You solve this and you get x equals pi over 2. Is everybody with me on that? Okay, so this is your ending point. Next, you need the increment, okay? And the increment, if you remember your formula, was period over 4. And period we agreed was pi, so your increment is pi over 4. All right? Guys with me on that? Okay. So next what you need to do is you need to put down a horizontal line. Okay? So here's my horizontal line. I will start out at whatever my starting value happens to be, which is minus pi over 2. Okay? And I'm going to be adding pi over 4 to it. So my next point is going to be negative pi over 4. Next one, 0. Next one, pi over 4. Uh, next one, pi over 2. Well, this had better be what I got here, okay? If not, then I'm smoking somewhere. You guys with me on that? Okay. And some people want to put a vertical line at the zero. I don't particularly care. Uh, I would prefer it at this end here and no need for the other end. Okay. And you know that your mother cosine function goes something like this, right? You, obviously, you got to know your mother before you can do this. Okay, if you don't know your mother, tough luck. Okay, so your graph's going to start out at 3, go through a 0, go to a minus 3, go through 0, and come up to a 3. So here's your graph that you want. You guys with me on that? And then for the key points, what I want is the x, y pairs. For, see how you got this 1, 2, 3, four and five points, I want the x, y coordinates of those. Those are your key points. Okay, so your key points are minus pi over two comma zero, minus pi over four, oops, this should be three, this should be zero, and then you got zero comma minus three, pi over four comma zero, and then finally pi over two comma three. Sorry? Wasn't there a question that asked you what are the key points? Wasn't there a line that says key points? Isn't there a line in my group practice on one of the problems? Yeah, you know, I have a feeling that some of you are hella conceited and you don't want to look at my group key. Okay, that's your choice. Okay, if you don't look at it and there are certain things in there, like for example, was there a diagram on my answer? Yes. Did you add it on your test? No. 
get a point R. I mean, that's why the key is there, okay, to teach you how I expect problems to be done. And if you're too conceited or you think you're too good to look at it, well, you get hurt. Okay, that's not my fault. Okay, you get hurt. Uh, all right, so everybody get the cosine graph, okay. All right, so let me pause here for a minute before we move on to uh, the tangent graph. Because the tangent graph is nasty, and I think it... All right, so, you know, I'm not going to answer these period amplitude questions to start out with. I'm going to do the graph first, okay? And then we can look at the period amplitude later on, okay? Uh, if you take a look at the mother tangent function, uh, let me go get this out of there. And let's go put it in there. Oops. Uh, tangent x. So this is your mother tangent function. And my claim is that this part of the graph, I don't know if you can see me kind of trace through that. That is one mother cycle. It goes from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. And every tangent graph that we do, we're going to try and fit it into that mother cycle. You guys with me on that? Okay. So you can see that there's an asymptote at minus pi over 2 and an asymptote at plus pi over 2. So that's what we're going to do. So tangent is going to be graphed using asymptotes, okay? So your left asymptote is going to be obtained by taking 2x and setting it to minus pi over 2 so that you get x equals minus pi over 4. That's your left asymptote. Okay? Your right asymptote comes from setting 2x equals plus pi over 2. Solve that and you get x right equals pi over 4. Okay? So really everything depends on the left and the right asymptotes. And then after that graphing, graphing the tangent function is easier, okay, it's easier. Obviously you need to know your mother. Uh, so we've got a horizontal line here. I have an asymptote here and I have an asymptote there. This guy is minus pi over 4.